I'm Johnny, and it's time for Kicking Drums. No, not like that. So the kick drum is the sound that provides the real meat of most tracks. Meat, meat, meat. While it's the bass that gets your booty moving, the kick is the thing that gives it grounding. It really anchors the groove. And this counts for banging ass a techno just as much as it counts for funky drum and bass. The kick drum is also called the bass drum. And there's this kind of woo, mystical thought that the kick drum vibrates the pelvis, blah, 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 and then sex is involved somehow. It gets weird. And I've done some research, I mean, just the bare minimum, but I've done some research into the natural frequency of the human body as if there is such a thing. And while there are a few parts of the body that do respond to the same general range of frequencies, it's like your eye balls man so this is just woo file it under 538 hertz and fucking chemtrails so unsolved mysteries aside about the kick drum's effect on the human body it's a real mistake to think of the kick drum as being I'm only about, about the bass, bass. About a bass. great example no. is that tennis ball on an old-timey telephone kick that's featured in most tropical house or on the other side of the spectrum entirely, a hardcore fuck you techno kick. I guess the kids these days are calling it hard style. Ah, kids these days. So when you're starting to really shape the kick of your track, the best thing you can do is to take an EQ and sweep it down the kick sound and get a sense of what the sounds are and what sounds can be accentuated and what sounds should be cut. And one of the biggest things that you can do is layer your kick. Because a kick drum is going to have three major components to it. That initial hit from the beater has a lot of complex overtones to it. And then there's a chunk of the kick, and I'm not a physicist, so don't really know, but I think it's that initial wave of the drum. And it's got a lot of chest thumpiness to it. And finally, there's that lower frequency hum. And depending on the kind of kick drum you have and whether or not it's synthesized, its tail may go on for a long time. So with that in mind, find that click that you really like from one kick drum and add that with that low bassy hum with another. And if you come from that XOX school of making the techno, try layering a 505 kick along with an 808. Palindromic reduplicated numerology for the win. Now, when you're working with kicks, you have to be careful with how your kicks interact with the bass line. In some songs, the kick really if you'll pardon the expression, kicks off the bass line where the hit starts something and then it's up to the bass to follow through with it. And there's this real movement towards side chaining the bass line with a kick. And side chaining can work, but you know what else works? Carving out space inside the bass for the kick drum and tuning your kick nicely. But if you approach it as if the side chaining is the last resort, and once you've sculpted everything nicely with your EQ, then add the side chaining, well, whoomp, you suddenly have a lot of room for the bass. All right, let's just quickly go over a few key frequencies that you're going to be concerned with when you're EQing your kicks. This is just general rules meant to be broken, but that said, anything under 50 hertz, just get rid of it and maybe even higher. A high pass filter that has a lot of heavy resonance around 50, even 80 hertz can give your kick a lot of beef. So 80 to 100 hertz gives you the thumpiness of the kick. 200 to 250 hertz gives you the boominess of the kick. And these two things are gonna interplay nicely. And depending on what kind of track you're making, you may need to cut this frequency range especially if you have a snare drum that's competing. Around 300 to 600 hertz is the boxiness of the kick. I mean, do we really want boxy kicks? And finally, now around 2 to 4 kilohertz, that's where you're going to get that snappy hit from the mallet. You know, the one with all the complex overtones? And again, this is just general rules, just the basics of the kick sound. There's a lot to go down this rabbit hole, but hopefully this gives you something to get started and to really explore because it really is the sound that can anchor your track if you're doing any kind of dance music. So spend some time on it because it is important. And until next time, kicking is fun. No, not like that.